Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. Today we're playing Stampin' Connect 4 on the Kitchen Table Stamper Craft Social. The Craft Social is our Facebook group where we share our Stampin' Creations, we play games, we um, support each other, and just have a really great time. Every other Thursday I put a challenge, a game, um, sometimes we play Taboo, sometimes we have a color challenge, sometimes there's an Inspiration Kitchen. We play all kinds of games every other Thursday. When we're not live for Mystery Card on Thursday, we're playing a game. And today, it's Stampin' Connect 4. I am connecting the four in this row here. So something scallops, early espresso, pie or dessert, and Misty Moonlight. So you can see, here's my pie and dessert. And early espresso, I used early espresso ink and some early espresso leaves. Misty Moonlight is my card base in my pie pans. And then something scalloped are these new labels. I love these scalloped labels. They're new in the holiday catalog. There are four sizes of this scalloped label. There's this big one, the small one, the medium one, and the long one. And these are from the seasonal labels dies. So that's my something scalloped and that's my connect four. You can connect four horizontal, vertical, diagonal, all four corners, make a postage stamp, and sometimes we do things like blackout or special games. <laughs> All right, so this is my card. It's a uh, swing fold card. Let's get started. Let's start with the card base. I've got an eight and a half by five and a half Misty Moonlight card, scored at four and a quarter and folded. And my designer series paper, this is from the Harvest Meadow designer series paper. It's four by five and a quarter. Let's glue that on. I'm gonna use liquid glue and let me tell you a little trick about these um, these swing fold cards. If you put your glue just around the edge of the paper, it'll hold the designer series paper, paper secure enough. And when you cut the window out, which we're gonna do next, you'll have two labels, one Misty Moonlight and one designer series paper. So you have two separate cutouts. You can put those in your scrap bin or in for the next project. You'll have two useful pieces instead of one double thick piece that's all glued together. So the next step is our window. We're going to grab this scallopy label and place it so that it's high of center but centered right to left. And then I like to tape it down because there's nothing worse for these swing fold cards than if you're window is wonky. It just won't um, open smoothly if it's kind of like on a diagonal or on a tilt. And with a finished product on the front of the card will just look wrong. So let's take our time with that and then um, tape it down and then run it through the machine with the card open. I'll show you. Got a couple of pieces of wild washi tape here. So it's going to be low tech, but I stuck it to my pants before I'm sticking it down to the card because I don't want to do any damage to this paper when I take it apart. Get a little lint on it and it makes it a little bit lower tack even than it already was. We're going to die cut. So I've got my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine here and I've got one, two, and three. I'm going to open up my card, lay it down flat, and then another panel number three. And let's just run that through. Now you'll see, you can pop this right out. Careful with that tape. And then when we take the tape off, hopefully, our little trick to make it a little less sticky worked. And even with the pressure, it'll come off clean. Yep, it's clean. Let's see if we can get this side. But you'll see, look at We've got two labels that are completely separate from each other. So it's nice. Both of those pieces can be used in another project. All right, before I go and take my machine out of the way, let me show you this. I've got a contrasting cutout, that same shape. See, so it'll fit right in the window here. And we're going to, before we put the machine away, we're going to put a little detail on there. I've got the stitched greenery die. I love this thing. It just gives the best impression a little texture it's going to actually stitch those leaves so we're going to pop that on our die pop that on our plate and run it through the stitched greenery works like any of the other 
dies. You need your platform, your die adapter, and two cutting plates. Now I'll just get up underneath here and peel this away. <laughs> Look at that gorgeous stitching. Isn't that beautiful? So we've got our window. We've got our die cut. Now let's look at the inside mechanism. So this piece right inside the card is five and a quarter by six. And we want it on the six inch orientation. We're gonna stamp our background before we score it. All right, so let's go ahead and get the two backgrounds that I chose. I've got this kind of modeled spots and then this splat. My modeled spots came from the gorgeous leaves stamp set, and we're going to use the intricate leaves, leaves dies to add these little embellishments. So you can bundle these two products and save 10%. And then my splat, you might recognize that because I do use it a lot, is this like spatter from Color and Contour. You could also use this one. I just like kind of liked it since I had it that this one leaves a little bit more open space. It gives you a lighter effect. So that's why the difference between the two and why I chose the um, splat from Color and Contour. Let's get some um, mini grid paper. We're gonna stamp this off a few times before we actually stamp our project. I love this mini grid paper. It's really handy. All right, so there's our six by five and a quarter vanilla paper. And we're gonna do the first layer of our background with crumb cake. So I'm gonna ink this modeled spot background and I'm gonna stamp off and stamp off. So now we've got a third generation impression. We're gonna stamp off the right edge. So we're getting a really soft effect here. We want the little pies and leaves to be the star of the show, but we don't want plain vanilla behind them. So then we're gonna turn this around and move it kind of along in a diagonal. And then again, ink it up, stamp off, stamp off. And we'll turn it around and go off the bottom. Now over here, we're gonna stamp off, stamp off, and then just taper this edge a little bit. I think that that's pretty good. So we're gonna slide the crumb cake out of the way and bring in early espresso, one of the colors that we needed to connect for. And we're gonna add some early espresso splats. So I'm gonna go off the edge, skip a little space, kinda toward the bottom, and then off the edge again. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> Now well, we've got early espresso open before we score this. Let's give it a second to dry anyways. We're gonna do our, any way you slice it, I'm thankful for your greeting. And then we're gonna stamp that on a very vanilla tag. So I've cut this very vanilla tag ahead of time. Let's move this guy to dry for a second. And that is with the TaylorMade tags dies. It's on the small side. So it's the bracketed tags. And it's the third large or the third largest, the second from smallest from Taylor May Tags. Let's go ahead and stamp our sentiment. Of course, if you don't recognize, this is one of my favorite stamp sets from the holiday catalog. Our greeting, our pie, our cookie. It's all from sweets and treats. We want our greeting kind of centered right to left, but low of center on the tag. So we can eat up some of the uh, vanilla space that's left with a little bit skinnier greeting. Cute. All right, we've got a little more stamping to do, so let's just keep going with the stamps before we assemble the swing part mechanism of our card. We've got very vanilla here. I'm gonna grab my stamp and pierce mat, and we're gonna stamp our pies and cookies and the little pie plate. I'm gonna use Memento Tuxedo Black. All right. By the magic of television, I already have some of the cookies already colored and cut, and a couple pies too. We're just gonna do one of each for this demonstration. So I got the little cookie, we're gonna stamp that guy. And the pie plate. That's so cute.
and a pie. <laughs> One last bit of stamping before we go. In the bottom right hand corner of our inside, we're gonna just add that little love you greeting. Isn't that so sweet? And so let's switch back to early espresso and just pop that green down there. Then we don't have to come back to stamp anything. I don't know. What is it? Maybe half inch from the bottom, maybe three eighths and about a quarter of an inch from the right. We'll love ya. It goes good with any way you slice it. I'm thankful for you. Love ya. And the little heart cookies. Oh my goodness. So cute. Before we assemble, let's color. I found for the cookie and the pastry on the pie, the best combination I could come up with it that looked a little bit golden brown was ivory and cinnamon cider, the light cinnamon cider. So let's go ahead and work the cookie. I'm going to just go around the edges with ivory. It'll swipe in really fast and easy. It's a small area. Then where the artist dotted to show some texture, we're just going to dot with cinnamon cider kind of all over and around the little dots that the artist put. Then we'll just swipe right around again using kind of a flicking stroke to bring those two colors together and give us kind of a golden brown cookie. And then for the pie, I'm gonna work the top of the pie first and just fill it in with a nice um, solid base coat. We're really gonna saturate the paper with the ink here. Now we'll take the cinnamon cider and just swipe up from the corners. And then bring the darker shade into the lighter shade. And then we can go on to the second area, which is this little ruffle of crust, all with ivory then cinnamon cider and bring those two together little tiny circles to just scribble the ivory and cinnamon cider together and the last thing i'm going to do here is switch over to cinnamon cider and fill in those little slits cute cute Frosting on my cookie is really simple, light calypso coral. And we'll just get a solid fill. My pie plate is gray granite. I've got light and dark. And this time, because we've got a big area to fill here, I'm going to use the brush and we're going to go just a line to fill. And then here, we're going to do those little circle strokes. Fill the area. It's kind of a big area to fill. I don't use the brush too often, but when there's a big area to fill, it makes it a little faster. And when you fill faster, you can blend better because your ink stays wet. So then where the artist drew in the little contours, we're going to add a little shadow. We can go underneath the plate like that and follow the contours again. And then here where it comes together. And you can just take that brush end and swipe across the contour. Bring it in the light one into the dark one. That's it. If you wanted to make it look kind of shiny, you could go with a color lifter and make a little highlight by pushing the gray color back. My pie plate is Misty Moonlight. I'm going to just color it in, get a nice solid fill with little circles. These guys need to be cut out. Let's go ahead and grab some paper snips and get them trimmed out. When I fussy cut these little guys, I'm gonna leave a small edge of vanilla, just the tiniest bit. And I'll cut them all out and meet you right back here to finish up this swing fold card. All right, I'm back with the rest of our little bits colored and cut. We've got one more thing for the inside of our card. See these beautiful leaves? They were cut with the intricate leaves dies from a scrap of early espresso. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me bring in the stamping cut and emboss machine. 
if you know me at all, you know I love the paper embellishment, the little um, solid color die cut or punched images that you kind of sprinkle in to give your project a little bit of um, a little bit of pop, some texture, some uh, dimension. But the thing about it is, is it doesn't cost you anything. You use your little dies and punches right from the scraps that you already have. It doesn't cost you any extra postage because it doesn't add a lot of bulk or weight. And it's the perfect way to just add some punch without any extra expense. This die set, this intricate leaves die set, with all of its little leaves, it's got two, and then this little skinny one and this kind of medium one are the perfect dies for these little paper embellishments. I'm going to take this guy. Oh, I should have done them with the adhesive sheets. I have no excuse because I have it right behind me. All right, did you see that? It was stuck in the die, so I just stuck to the tape to it, pulled it out. Now when I pull out here, it's going to weed that for me too. So <laughs> if you've never... if you ever experienced having the die cut stuck in the die <laughs> and you haven't been able to get it out easily that's my tip for you these weed out pretty easy you can see when i picked it up off the thing it left most of the leftovers behind but the little low tack tape for weeding is a good tip too all right let's bring in our six by five and a quarter and the Simply Scored tool. Pop this in on the six inch side. You're gonna score at two and at four. It's really important if you're doing a background thing like this that you uh, stamp then score so you don't see the lines when you put a kind of solid background like that over. We're going to fold this. So from the right hand side, you wanna fold in at the first score and out or back at the second score. So your fold works like this, you see? Now this part right here is gonna get a full cover of liquid glue. We want a nice, secure adhesion here. We're gonna bring in our card base. We're gonna bring this insert into the card and adhere it with an equal border top, right, and bottom. And then just burnish the whole thing down and give it a second to grip. Once it's got a grip, you'll close the card, line up your die, and here's the funny part about this one. It looks very symmetric, doesn't it? Symmetrical. But if you've got this one upside down, it's gonna tell you it's upside down. It just does not fit. So I gotta switch it the other way and then look at how perfectly it fits. The first time I did it, I put the glue down. I put in the die without um, auditioning it first, and it didn't fit. So then this side was all full of glue. I had to turn it around so it fit, and then I glued the card closed. So <laughs> please pay attention with these scallop labels that um, if you're doing this like inset technique, that it does have a right and a wrong way to fit in. So we've got it. We've figured out the right way. We're gonna add our adhesive in that window so we know that we've got all the glue in the right place and then bring our cut out and inlay right in the window and burnish. So good. Now you've just made a swing fold card. Pretty cool, huh? We won't pull on that too much right now. Let's let it dry a bit. <laughs> uh, I've got my little cut out images here and of course you can just go ahead and cut these or stamp these guys right on your insert if you want to i wanted it to look like that the pies were in front and the cookies and then the background was this kind of blowing leaves and the other thing is too with the swing folds if you use on this side so if you stamp the pie there and color it on this side it's going to bleed through so you can Cut them out and layer them like I did if you want to. But if you want to stamp right on, just know that if you color with the Stampin' Blends, they're going to bleed. All right, now let's see here. I got a pie and a cookie and a plate for the outside. 
So here the inside, I've got two pies and three cookies and three leaves. I'm just gonna glue them on with liquid glue so that they look like they're kind of scattering in the wind. So this guy's gonna go right kind of at the beginning of the, of the background, give it kind of an angle like it's taken off. A little cookie on a tippy angle below. Right above the love you. I think that's cute and important. I'm gonna grab this leaf and just drag the multi-purpose liquid glue down the stem of the leaf, like right down the center. And then I usually just take the bottle and do the extreme ends there. Make sure nothing crosses over the fold. And then I need another pie. Kind of tip in the other way. Isn't that funny? I love it. I love the colors too. And this heart's gonna kinda tip. And then two more leaves. One up here, kinda blowing away. And one in this middle panel. If you ever get too much glue, just come over with the next item. Wipe it all off. You see that? I'll just leave it there and in a second I'll be gluing it down and it'll be fine. And our last little heart, maybe a dab more glue. And it's kind of stumbling back behind here. I love it. What do you think? Crazy? A little bit maybe, right? All right, then let's close up and work on the front. Sample here. Let's get that guy in and our tag. I love this beautiful flirty flamingo with the gold. I think it's kind of a fun color for fall. The gold really uh, makes it, I think, kind of an appropriate color for fall. Let's slide the ribbon from the front to the back and then pull a length that's about as long as your palm to your middle finger. That usually is a good rule of thumb for how much ribbon you need. Loop, swoop, tuck, pull, and then hold the knot, give a little finesse. And the loops are the right size. You can trim the tails and let's pop it on with some dimensionals. Got minis here. I'm gonna put three on the back. When you put your items on the label, you wanna make sure that they're well within the edge of the label so that the card will swing open and closed. So we've got our bow is soft and flexy, but mostly inside the label and everything swings neatly. Now our other three little cut colored images. Let's adhere them using some Stampin' Dimensionals. So for our little plate, we're going to put that centered right to left across the label, but overlapping the edge of our tag. So it fills some of that vanilla space and the tag is a little bigger than the greeting. And then our pie right on top of there. Now, if you um, feel confident lining the two up when you stamp, then you can cut them out in one piece. I am far better at cutting than I am at lining up stamps. So I just cut them in two pieces. Our little heart is going to overlap on the side, kind of sitting next to the plate. So what I like to do is put the dimensional where I know it's going to be covered by the heart, instead of trying to put it on the back of the heart where it might already land in an area that's up one dimension or one level anyway. So there's our little heart cookie, and <laughs> that's it. That is your Connect Four for October 21st, 2021 in the Kitchen Table Stamper Craft Social. I hope you'll come and join us. The link is below in the description. We've got a really fun Connect Four game going on right now. Everybody's welcome to play. The rules are so simple. Use your Stampin' Up! products. Don't link away from the Craft Social. And please do not promote yourself or any other demonstrator or stamp company. That's it. Play the game, share your creation, and uh, join our community. There it is. If you guys have any questions about the swing fold, the craft social, if there's anything I can do to help you stay crafty, email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com and the shop Stampin' Up! 24-7 buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net.
Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.